Chris, how's it going? Hey, what's up? Chilling. Where are we today? We are at the gallery. Hey. Production studios in the back. How'd you get your start in surfing photography? We're in Pismo Beach, and it's a town that's probably known more for its clam chowder than its great waves, but somehow I lucked out and learned how to surf in this town. Grew up at the beach here, and, and to be honest, when I picked up a camera, I wanted to be a landscape photographer. That's all I cared about was, you know, beautiful nightscapes and mountains and everything, but I knew that that was a hard thing to make a living at, so I, I kind of put my focus into surfing and shooting not only the sport, but the beautiful places that we're able to find ourselves in, in the water, so that was kind of how I got my start, I guess. Speaking of surfboards, you've got some awesome ones back there. Can you show me what's going on? Yeah, I have these three boards in the back. The thing that's special about these boards is that not only do we put photographs into the fiberglass, but they're photos of glacial rivers, and they're these really beautiful places in Iceland where the water just braids gorgeously, and, and I wanted to, to create a board that could actually have like a conservation kind of meaning behind it, so these boards are, um, are meant to raise funds to kind of support this nonprofit group over there in Iceland. So. What's the craziest place you've ever been surfing? Shoot, the, well the craziest place um, actually is probably probably the, the Aleutian Islands. I went there in 2013, had an amazing trip, and I've, I've been back since, and it's one of the places I just I dream about. You know, so raw, so rugged, 100 mile per hour winds, like it doesn't get any more intense than that. You guys wanna check out the back? Let's go. All right. It's, it's super top secret, so uh, just, uh, you know, make sure we keep it hush-hush. So this is kind of the production studio side of, um, of the space. We have the whole crew here basically working on images, working on some of the fun and unfun parts of the business. This is my cube. Uh, it's basically a shipping container that um, we cut into two, and, and this whole thing is kind of filled with, with little knickknacks. This is from Japan. Um, I did a, a trip there just a couple weeks ago, or months ago, and this is just like a Japanese calendar that's on the totally the wrong day here. But um, this is just pieces of art people have made, photographs from my favorite photographers, just kind of surrounding yourself with books and things that kind of inspire you, I guess. What's your favorite lens? 16 to 35 is the go-to. I think it's probably what you have on right now. <laughs> 80% of my photographs I probably shoot with it. And when the F4 came out, I loved it, but the F2.8, that's the one that just is, it goes with me on every trip, and it's kind of the thing that I, I probably use the most. What's the most helpful camera feature? The thing that I actually love the most about mirrorless is just the live view in the viewfinder. When I look at the viewfinder, when I look at the LCD screen, I know exactly what my exposure is. And when life is going like that fast, you need kind of to be able to react. What's your favorite part about the studio? Yeah, check us out. So besides the kitchen, which is like the obvious favorite, um, I also love this little thing we built. This is our climbing wall. We go to, you know, on jobs that require all kinds of different activity. And so it's good to like be able to have something to be able to stay in shape a little bit. And then, you know, if you kind of move beyond here in the back, this is kind of like where all of our gear storage is, all the stuff that we, we, we take on trips, cameras, stuff like that as well. Speaking of gear, Zoom or Prime? For me, I love Primes. Being able to, to you know, have the lens the sharpest, best tool is great, but I, I usually end up using a Zoom. Uh, are you shooting in manual or auto? Manual, always. Viewfinder or LCD? Um, I love the viewfinder. It's my go-to, but it's, the funny thing is that nowadays, because I'm shooting out of planes, or I'm shooting in a water housing, or I'm you know, whatever it might be, I, I use the LCD a ton. I would say it's probably about 50-50, 60-40 sometimes. In camera or in post? Always in camera, always in camera. Cool, come back on this way. Hey Chris, when did you start posting to Instagram? It was 2012, I had a friend, we we're traveling through Iceland, he's like, man, he's like, you should really get on this app. He's like, it's really good for photographers, you know, it's, it's all about photos. And I'm like, wait, what? Why would I share photos from the trip? Um, until the trip is over. Wouldn't the magazine be mad? And he's like, nah, it'll be fine. So I think the first photo I shared was probably like something of my food or something kind of lame, right? And then eventually I was like, I'm gonna start sharing something with a little more meaning there. How many followers do you have? We just hit three million, which is, which is really huge and kind of mind blowing to think about. What would you tell 20 year old Chris Burkhardt? Mm. If I was 20 year old Chris Burkhardt, I would probably say to lay off the Mexican food. And I, I envision, I would suggest to, you know, start shooting more of the stuff that really inspires you. Because I think at that point, I was so eager to 
please my editors and you know create work that like they were going to be excited on that I was kind of branching away from the stuff that got me stoked and when I started to do that I feel like I was just way more inspired. Dude thanks for having us in your studio today appreciate it. Dude, thank you man appreciate it. Yeah.